And, and here's a beautiful question for Tommy Robinson. How many boys have been abused in Rotherham? How many children under the age of 11 have been abused in Rotherham? We'll never know why, because it's not Muslims who've been doing that. And that's very important. Where's their voice? Yeah, because it's white Englishmen who are abusing and white English women, unfortunately, who are abusing under 11s and boys. So that's something to bear in mind when you hear all this rather of nonsense in that, in that sense that Muslims are doing it. Uh, we, we're protecting our girls. Why are you protecting your boys as well? Why? Because Brahman ain't doing that. And it's, it, that's a standard. The Rotherham thing again, sorry. Okay. People say to me, Islam teaches this. This, this is from Islam that you, uh, the, these, these Muslims are doing this because this is from Islam, you see, you see these women. I'll ask a very simple question. Which teaching of Islam tells you to ply young girls with alcohol and pass them around for sex? This, you can't even shake hands, they, they mock us. Islam falls mock Muslims for not shaking hands with the opposite sex. They say, oh, you, 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 prude, you won't touch your hand. And then at the same time you're telling us they're gonna go grooming girls for sex. And if they are doing that, it's got nothing to do with Islam. This is 21st century England. The question needs to be asked. How are 1400 girls neglected? in this society. 1,400 girls left at the mercy of these scumbags. Where were their carers? Where were their protectors? Nobody cared about them until brown men started abusing them. And then all of a sudden they cared. So the, the, the key about this, um, I know I've gone off topic from the original question, but this, all these things that happened in Rotherham was all about what vulnerability? Victims, scumbags will prey on the weak and vulnerable. These girls were left at the mercy of these scumbags. And how does a 21st century society in England create this in an industrial scale? Not just in one town, many towns. But according to the teachings of Islam, it, it, it can't even begin. It, you know, the, the alcohol, no alcohol, no drugs. You know, the idea you don't know where your daughter is, where she should be in school, is mind-blowing. So I just want to maybe get a bit of context because there's this thing we, we there is a perception that's portrayed by the media that this is the majority of child sexual exploitation that happens the reality is if you if you take all child sexual exploitation without any subcategories because the subcategory that's focused on is what we what was a new new category called on street grooming and then these then we had these statistics come out that 84 percent of these people are from a certain ethnic background but let's remove all the categories and look at the 100% of child sex exploitation in the UK, for example. What percentage of this 100% is on-street grooming? Any guesses? Of all of the child sex exploitation that happens, online grooming, the other types of grooming and sexual exploitation, including on-street grooming, what percentage of this total, i.e. all of this child sexual exploitation, what percentage of it is on-street grooming? which is what these girls in Rotherham um, were, were uh, unfortunately victims of. What was, have, have a guess. Any guesses? 50. And any other guesses? 20, 20, 20. 7%. So 93% of the cases of child sex exploitation is not on street grooming. 93% is every other category, which you don't hear about in the papers, uh, etc. Because most of these people are from another ethnic background, which happens to be the majority of the country. But the focus is on these specific people. Now, there's lots of agendas behind why these people are being focused on. And unfortunately, it detracts from the fact that there are victims who have suffered these things. And the, the insinuation is made that this is somehow either an ethnic issue, by something wrong with these, the cultural background of these people, uh, which is strange, or that this is somehow a religious issue. But with the reverse accusation isn't made. When you look at the 93%, we don't say, is there something inherently wrong with this majority culture that allows for these people to do what they're doing? Or is there something wrong with the religion of these people of the majority culture that allows to do what they're doing? But the question is asked the other way around of the, of the minority. So all of the people who do this are, in my eyes, evil people. They need to be caught and punished severely. But this is, you cannot lay this at the feet of either the culture 
all at the feet of the religion. That's very clear. But what we're focusing on when we hear these newspaper reports about gang, grooming gangs, etc., is a small, tiny fraction of the overall child sex exploitation. I just thought I'd give you that. And you can check that out. You don't have to take my word for it. Just look up the statistics for child sexual exploitation as a whole without the subcategories, and then look at the statistics for the subcategories, and it tells you the degree to which these are occurring. Okay. Because the groomers pass themselves as boyfriends. When they, first, they start showing a little bit of love, uh, they acted as, as if they were their boyfriend, and the girl thought, this is my boyfriend, and the next thing you know, they're being passed around, and, and this is how it starts. You see, this is a beautiful thing about Islam. It nips everything in the bud. Can't become an alcoholic because you can't be around alcohol or drugs. Can't gamble so you can't become a, a gambling addiction. Can't deal in interest so you're not now having Wonga loans and payday loans and credit card debts through the sky. Can't um, forget, this is the beautiful thing you see, it's not just about having sex with girls, yeah? You can't be alone with them. You can't be alone with the one who's not related to you. You know, this me too, it can't apply to practicing Muslims. Because we don't touch women who are not related to us. Yeah, we don't be alone in a room with a woman who's not related to us. According to our teachings. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think if, if a girl had in her, eye, in her head, she shouldn't have a boyfriend, she could never be groomed. I would say that, yeah, the two things do go together, to be honest with you. Because, like I say, they, they pass, if you look at the cases, they were passing these guys off as boyfriends. And they thought these guys cared for them and loved them. But the reality was, obviously, scumbags prey on the weak and vulnerable. Just as white English tourists go to Philippines. Yeah, they pray, they'll go there to the rich families and say, oh, can I have your daughter? No, they'll go to the poor, the weak, the vulnerable, and they give them money and they do what they do. Where's well, the vulnerable? Just as the, the Catholic priest will pray on the vulnerable altar boy. Or in the prep schools, they'll pray on the young boys. You know, the, the scumbags will always pray on what, what's vulnerable. Yeah? And so in this case, in Rotherham, these girls were vulnerable. And it's an abomination in the 21st century UK. There's 1,400 girls that nobody cared about. And, and here's a beautiful question for Tommy Robinson. How many boys have been abused in Rotherham? How many children under the age of 11 have been abused in Rotherham? We'll never know why, because it's not Muslims who've been doing that. And that's very important. Where's their voice? Yeah, because it's white Englishmen who are abusing, and white English women, unfortunately, who are abusing under 11s and boys. So that's something to bear in mind when you hear all this Rotherham nonsense, in that, in that sense, that Muslims are doing it. Uh, we, we're protecting our girls. Why are you protecting your boys as well? Why? Because Brahmin ain't doing that. And it's, it, that's a standard. <laughs>